Hello and welcome to Strat News Global and welcome to the third of our three-part series on science and tech. Today we are looking at cyber physical systems mission. Uh, I am Surya Gangadharan and I have with me my guest. Professor Ashutosh Sharma, Secretary, Department of Science and Technology. Sir, welcome. Thank you, Surya. Glad to have you. It's great to have you too. Sir, Cyber Physical Systems Mission. Exactly, what does that mean? So let's first understand what Cyber Physical means. Um, as the name would suggest, that this is a combination of digital and cyber elements on one side, and something physical like we think about machines and stuff on the other side. The physical could even be our body, yeah. which is physical, and then all the digital and cyber. The integration or convergence of these elements into each other is called a cyber physical system. Okay. Now, um, cyber physical system, or indeed all these systems of the future, machines of the future, uh, and our everyday objects of the future that we call, for example, Internet of Things and so on, or Industry 4.0 machines. They are all basically a convergence or integration of different streams of technologies. What are these streams? So you have fast communication, stable communication, let's say 5G and beyond. Then at the same time, you have computation. Computation which could be also distributed in every object, uh, what is called computation on edge, not just by central server. Uh, so communication, computing, then autonomous decision making based on a lot of data that is pulling in, relevant data to make decision. And that autonomous decision making is called artificial intelligence or machine learning, deep learning by different names. So you, uh, you know, because human brain can't process that much big amount of data and arrive at it quickly at some right kind of decision. That decision is made. Then also perception because sometimes data is coming not just by internet, uh, or, or communication, but it's coming through watching the surroundings. Let's say if you are flying something mm -hmm. or a, a, a pilotless car. So sensors are there, which is like perception. Uh, and then finally, based on your decision, uh, you have to implement that decision, which may be autonomous. Let's say course correction, your car is going here. So that's called um, actuators or be able to act on the surroundings. So. Cyber physical systems is basically a bundle of all of these things, just to repeat, mm -hmm. communication, perception, computing, autonomous decision, autonomous action, right? So, so this is how you would define cyber physical systems. In industry, they are known as Industry 4.0 and okay. beyond. In society, it may be called Society 5.0 and mm -hmm. beyond. Uh, and basically, Internet of Things, uh, robotics, uh, data analytics. Um, so 5G would form a vehicles. part of this? Yes. Okay. So in fact, you know, it's very interesting what you ask. See, until 4G, most of the communication is between people. Yeah. Or at the most between a people and machine. But 5G and beyond, most of the communication, the volume of the communication would be between machines. Uh, so it is what the meaning of IoT is. Uh, so it's the machines that are communicating with each other, uh, doing their job, if you would, right? And so this will all be driven by 5G and of course beyond that, uh, mm -hmm. right? So, com so uh, you know, there were silos of technologies. Communication is separate, computing is separate, uh, machines are separate, uh, data analytics. And all of this was a little passive because it's the people who are making use yeah. of all of these elements separately. Mm. But now with the convergence, it empowers the machine uh, to do all the things for which maybe you needed people. Not all the things, but certain kind of jobs, for example, repetitive jobs, mm -hmm. some of the manufacturing uh, work and so on. Uh, right? And, and of course, we already know, I mean, now you have all these speakers, we all live with these some strange names like Alexa and stuff, mm -hmm. uh, right? So they're all driven by information, some of it by machine learning and so on to get you the right information. So all this is going to converge onto our mobile phone, onto our computers, yes. laptop? No, every object. 
so of course mobile and computer are okay but computer doesn't doesn't act it computes yeah, right. right but now so that is one aspect of the machine or technology but now you you would have that uh, in any object right maybe i ask this mug i say oh is the water clean it will uh, through sensor it may be showing actually what kind of water is in there okay. and it's getting information about ho- how old this water is are they got bacteria in it right mm-hmm. and it's telling you all the time uh, so you know and whole lot of autonomous action when you look at all these machines that don't require uh, you know tight supervision even for uh, for for doing diagnostics so you know saying what is wrong with me mm-hmm. right so they they giving you diagnostics and they may even be self correcting mm-hmm. so you are um... Uh, kind of um, making the doctor's role uh, less interventionist in that sense so it is actually empowering both the doctor and the patient in the in ways in which it was not possible earlier to give you an example um i see under this mission on cyber physical systems last year we started uh, is the mission is worth uh, 3660 crore rupees and we established 25 hubs across the country mm-hmm. which are working in different aspects of cyber physical systems now one of the hubs in bangalore uh, at the indian institute of science bangalore is called art park they have developed this uh, method wherein you take an x ray of your chest your lungs it may be low resolution x ray mm-hmm. it may be analog or digital x ray then you upload it online right that image and within seconds Uh, it will diagnose uh, 15 different conditions of your lungs including covid 19 uh-huh. right <laughs> right now this is free you can use it anybody uh, so now what do i do it is able to reach people where doctors were not reaching earlier mm-hmm. rural areas it may be rural areas so basically whole point is to reach the unreached it's not it's not to remove the doctor the point is we don't have the doctor yeah yeah so it is basically creating new opportunities right where you were not able to serve people or where the certain kind of needs of those people were not being served so this is how that you would do it all right so you see is about creating new opportunities not about destroying uh, the opportunities that exist uh, even you see to make these stuff let's say the diagnostics you you need the experience of doctors their knowledge yeah right and then so it's not only one diagnostics there are a whole lot of other diagnostics and a whole of this actually comes into what do you call telemedicine you know yeah, even yeah, remote tele- surgeries would become possible yeah. with these robots these machines autonomous machines they can be supervised but then you know one uh, let's look at the example very interesting of ventilators that we recently yeah, needed yeah. so many of them now you see a uh, 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 icu ventilator it needs actually a trained doctor yeah what would you do yeah yeah right so then now these ventilators that we developed in india they have iot they have you know these ai and stuff in there and they <laughs> can be monitored remotely mm mm-hmm. So what you're saying is that what we see in Alexa today hmm. is only a crude version of something which is going to come. Yeah, great. This crude, crude. I mean, is is limited. It's I mean, limited, what it yeah. does is more limited, right? But if you were to say, if you do the entire chain of actions, also, you know, complete that. Then it becomes, for example, if your refrigerator is a very simple example, the refrigerator has all the sensors and it knows well. Okay, you need to order milk now, and it ought. you know from where to order milk yeah so orders and what quantity is needed the refrigerator orders or we have to no refrigerator orders because it has learned your behavior yeah, it has mm-hmm. learned it knows more about your life than you do as far as eating is concerned mm-hmm. right so i say oh these vegetables have gone bad we need to order the vegetable so it's ordering the vegetable and get delivered right so whole lot of your you know drudgery of your life uh, gets uh, addressed but you see in the indian context let's get back to indian context because this is, looks a l- little bit like okay uh, you know science fiction yeah but it is not science fiction other you know people would make use of it uh, but 
There are a lot of India-centric problems, right, which may be unique to India or more important for India, and they have to be addressed uh, with these technologies. Uh, these technologies that we have to evolve and um, use in India, they are not for uh, replacing people. We don't have problem with people. Yeah, I mean, right? Some other countries might have it. So they, they, they may be uh, replacing people who are not there by machines. Right? Actually, they are not there though, people. Young people, you know, we have demographic dividend. Yeah. So therefore, idea is not to replace people, but to create new opportunities, which means uh, to provide those services that we are not able to provide right now uh, with the traditional technologies yeah. and to reach out to larger number of people who are not being served now. Right? So this is create new opportunities, basically. Is India ready for it? No, I, absolutely. Like, okay, who would not want to actually get diagnosis done? Mm -hmm. So you see, the, the, anyway, all of these technologies, they hunt in pairs. Now, if you need also an X-ray, right, to be able to make use of this technology, so obviously you need portable, inexpensive X-rays. Yeah. They may not give you high-resolution digital pictures, but then your other technology has to adopt to that, mm -hmm. which means even if it's low resolution, even if it's not, you know, you should still be able to do your job, right? So India is ready for it. Of course, it's 100% ready and it's been ready for quite some time now. Also look at your processes of decision making, whether it's in the government, private sector. You know, so the decision making processes, now they become very, very fast, especially in sectors like FinTech already happened. Yeah. You make split second decisions about selling, buying, what have you. All this is done by machines. They're not done by people. And these machines are going to be uh, made here? Uh, yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, so there are two aspects of it. One is creating right knowledge for it, designing, and then manufacturing. These are three different aspects, yeah. right? So in many cases, we have global interdependence. Uh, if we can design something, some part of it may be manufactured somewhere. Some would be manufactured here. Yeah. Some would be assembled here. Some part would be imported, but a lot more will get developed here. Also, don't forget, in a knowledge society of the future, it is knowledge which brings you money, not necessarily only manufacturing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, th there's a point like design. Uh, you know, whoever holds intellectual property, okay, they make all the money, uh, isn't it? So there are certain things that, of course, you manufacture, uh, and there are certain things that you design. Certain things you assemble, it all there is no single rule mm -hmm. uh, for all of this. It depends on the sector, depends on the product and technology. But any point is that we must have our knowledge, we must have our IP, our design. Uh, you know, so e even global designs are done all in India. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. It doesn't matter. R and D is done here. It doesn't matter what big company you're talking about. The global designs they are done here. So we have deep strengths in it, except that we are not leveraging those strengths for ourselves. Somebody else is leveraging them as our human resources, all right? Yeah. So to seed that, and so these 25 hubs actually, it has a very a new architecture, which will make it effective. What is that new architecture? First of all, it is arms length from the government. For example, Department of Science and Technology. In other words, the hubs are, each one of them is a Section 8 company, not-for-profit company. Mm -hmm. The board of this company is made up of one-third industry, one-third academia, and one-third line ministries. Three of them working together, this is called triple helix model of, uh, you know, doing things. Mm -hmm. This is what empowers, uh, you know, things. <coughs> so they are delegated powers from our side, financial, administrative, and so on. Uh, the big roadmap, the big vision is communicated to an apex committee, where in this case is headed by Chris Gopal Krishnan, who is one of the founders of Infosys. Mm. Similarly, this committee has, uh, you know, one-third government, one-third industry, one-third academia, right? And then, but, you know, these hubs are autonomous. So, so they are able to, uh, they do everything from basic R&D to developing technology uh, to having startups and incubators to having connect with the industry to having connect global connect uh, for knowledge 
wherever it's required. All of these powers are given to them. So, last question. When do you expect we'll be reasonably networked as a knowledge economy? So, because knowledge economy is not a single network. Yeah. So, in some sense, we are networked now in certain sectors. We are networked now in some, um, you know, sections of society. We are networked now. You see, you must not forget, India is not in that sense a homogeneous country. Yeah. Mm. Right? The diversity, diversity and heterogeneity are also important aspects, which is why a single size does not fit all. So, any question that you may ask about India yeah. would only have a partial answer. Mm. Uh, because you say, okay, it is also this and it's also this, okay. both together. Right? So, there is no such thing as, it will be increasingly happening uh, in different sectors, in different sections of society. Uh, so, the direction is clear that this is going to happen increasingly, is happening increasingly globally, and it's going to happen. Uh, but the point to remember, I just, I have always repeated that when we start a new technology mission, we must know who we are, what our needs and our priorities are. It's not simply a question of uh, copying some technology from somewhere else. Yeah. And if we had that wisdom, if we had that insight, then I have no doubt that we would do much, much better uh, than simply copying something. On that note, Professor Sharma, thank you very much thank for taking you. part in this series. And looking forward to more such interactions in the future. Indeed. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you very much. Uh, that's all we have in our three-part series. And uh, looking forward to your comments, observations. Uh, do follow us on our website and our social media handles. And of course, on Twitter. Thank you again.